Hello, welcome to my video on data structures. This is part one for the hash table data structure. In this video, we will motivate hash table and discuss its basic idea. Imagine that we have stored a set of data in vector or linked list, and we would like to search a piece of data against them. When using vector, if the data is not sorted, we have to go over each data element and the time complexity for the search will be ON. If the data is sorted, we can apply binary search and the time complexity can be reduced to O log N. For linked list, no matter whether the data is sorted, we need to spend ON time for the search. Now, we need a data structure that can support faster data search, ideally in constant time. This is why we developed the hash table data structure, which supports data search, insertion, and deletion in constant time. However, know that the constant time complexity corresponds to an average case scenario rather than the worst case scenario. The key idea of hash table is to associate the data content with its storage location. For example, when storing a number 13 to a vector A, we can simply store the number at the 13th position in the vector A. This naive approach thus enables all search, insert, and delete operations in constant time. This is a toy example that illustrates this naive approach. More formally, consider that we are given a data element D and a hash table A, which is simply a vector in this case. We are also given a hash function f that accepts the data element d as input. We apply the function f to the input data d and obtain the output i as the hash value for d. Finally, we insert the data d to the ith position of the hash table a. Here, the data d is not necessarily a real value. It can also be a general object. For example, it can be a student record object that contains three fields, the student ID, the student's name, and the student's measure. We may use only a part of the data fields when calculating the hash value. The expectation is that the combinations of these data fields are all unique. For example, we may only use the student ID here. We call data fields that are used to calculate hash values the keys, and those that are not the values. Besides real value, another frequently used key data type is string. In this case, the string is first converted to a real value based on the ASCII code of its characters before the hash function is applied. Let's go over a simple example. Suppose we would like to store a set of people and their favorite games in hash table. We know that the names of the people are likely to be unique, and we choose the name field to be the key. We simply look up the ASCII table and find the code for each letter, and add them up to convert the names to real values. Then, we come up with a simple hash function f which simply computes the modulo of 10. We apply this hash function to the real values converted from the names and compute the corresponding hash values. Finally, based on the hash value, we insert the records to the corresponding positions of the hash table. For example, the name Mary corresponds to a hash value of 9, and the record is stored in the ninth position of the hash table. Know that the entire record, including both the keys and the values, are stored. Let's try two searches here. We would like to know Alex and Tom's favorite games. When searching for Alex record, we first compute its corresponding hash value, which is 4 here. We then retrieve the information from the fourth position of the hash table. We compare the search key Alex with the record key Alex and find the match. 
we then return the value field of the record, in this case, Warcraft, as the result for the search. When searching for Tom's record, we perform a similar procedure as above. Tom's corresponding hash value is also 4, and we retrieve the record from the fourth position of the hash table. When comparing the search key with the record key, we find that they do not match. In this case, we report that Tom's record does not exist in the hash table. From the above example, you may know that some different keys may correspond to the same hash value. For example, both Alex and Tom correspond to the hash value of 4. Consider if the data we have contains Tom and his favorite game. In this case, Alex and Tom's record would compete for the same location in the hash table. We call this scenario a collision, which is frequent when handling large datasets. Much effort in hash table development is spent on avoiding or handling collisions. And we will discuss these ideas in the upcoming videos for this module. In summary, in this video, we have discussed the basic idea of hash table. In the next video, we will discuss separate chaining and approach for handling collision. Thanks for watching and see you next time.